Well, good morning, everyone. What a week we have had um, as a people. Just a few uh, comments. Uh, we're glad that you're here and glad that you've come today. Um, when we make decisions about what to do uh, in crises like this that we've never experienced in our lifetime before, it is good to know that some people will affirm your decision making by turning up and showing some solidarity. That is beautiful. In the weeks to come, I hope you'll demonstrate the same kind of solidarity by not turning up, um, because we may need to do that very soon. Um, as we've decided and made some decisions moving forward, in, as we review what's available to us by our government, our healthcare professionals, our public health agencies, our denomination, and other faith communities. You take all that information and try to decide what is the best way forward for a time such as this. Um, I've never been in a pandemic before, and I can assure you none of you have been in one either, unless you were alive in 1918, and let's not go there. I don't think any of you were, so. Um, Diane Boyd pointed out to me, uh, she's a, one of our Reverend Diane Boyd, who is our pastoral visitor. Th I think she thought she was being kind and friendly. A, a passionate person in history uh, said that she was reading through the minutes of Rockwood Presbyterian Church, the session minutes, and it said that in 1918, the minister of Rockwood Presbyterian Church had contracted the Spanish flu. And the minute from two months later was that he had died. I I'm not sure that's really helpful. Um, but certainly it adds to my thinking and decision-making as we move forward. Um, a couple things to say. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of attention on what we're dealing with right now. It will behoove you to watch and to review and to check in to the things that are necessary for you to know what you need to do next. Other than that, Please, for your own sake and well-being, don't connect as fully. And you're rightly going to say, well, how will I do that? There are no sports on. There, there are limited shows on, and I'm not sure how many wedding shows or other strange relationships I can watch on TLC. Maybe read a book. Maybe turn it all off. Maybe for a day such as this, isn't it interesting how the spirit works? we are actually encouraged by Jesus to go off in secret and practice some spiritual practices. Maybe that's what the Spirit is calling us to do today. We will make a decision tomorrow as to what to do moving forward. Everything is looking like, for the sake of what our public health officials are saying, our government, other faith communities, is that we are going to shut everything down. For the sake of, and you've learned this new phrase, I hope, flattening the curve. That seems to be the most appropriate action for a time such as this, especially in a population, with no disrespect, a population that is over the age of 65. While none of you were alive for the Spanish flu, some of you remember when the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I, not in my lifetime, I, I, don't, I don't know. So that is likely to happen. For the sake of our community, we probably will go and step in line with what the schools have already done and other decisions that will be made. What it has shown us is as a Presbyterian church in Canada, we have an interesting system and we have rules. And our rules say that the denomination, the Presbyterian Church in Canada national office, never head office, national office, the staff that are paid for through your generous donations, they can't tell us what to do because our rules say that it's up to every single church to decide what it does on its own. And so churches are waiting for someone to say what they should do. And then in our country, we have a system. We have a public health system. We have medical officers of health. We have emergency management professionals. We have government officials, both city, provincially, and federally. And everyone sort of waits for someone to say the right thing to do. And sometimes within those individual spaces, one needs to say it for the sake of others making the next best decision. 
And so part of what a church might need to do for the sake of those people who want to be good church attenders is to say, stop, we're not going to come and gather. And so that's what we've been wrestling with this week. With this week. I think we've done everything we possibly could in all the advice and all the mandates and all the guidelines we've been given by public health to try and ensure our well-being and healthy safety. You've done it very well. You're pretty far away from each other, which is good. We're not going to have coffee hour after the service today. There's no church school or nursery today. I'd encourage you all as you leave this morning to dab a little sanitizer or go and wash your hands, whatever works for you, and go off to those spaces and stay healthy and whole. But this is an uncertain time. It's a confusing time for some, and it's also a, a time of heightened anxiety and concern. We have sought to be as calm as possible, um, but there comes that sweet spot when stepping in line with our country, with our community, with our neighbors, and with ourselves to say, it seems like everything is pointing to we need to just shut it all down. And if this wasn't what we're dealing with of a pandemic, if this was a massive good old Canadian snowstorm, I know that some of you would still try to come to church even though it's ridiculous for you to do so without us shutting it down. And most times we don't. In the history of St. Andrew's Church, we've only shut down a few times. We've shut down last year when we had that ice storm and still some people wanted to come. We shut down, apparently, again, some of you are older, during Hurricane Hazel. Like, those are the only times we seem to shut down. And so it's important as we make this, these next steps over the coming weeks that we do so wisely, looking to the information that's being given by all the sources that are knowledgeable, experts, people who know what they're doing, not your buddy who lives far away somewhere on your Facebook page who's telling you all the right things to do. Don't listen to them. Listen to the officials, go to the websites that tell us about what to do next, what is the appropriate things to do, learn about what you need to learn about, and then shut it off. And then do what's best for you and your family. Um, so that would be my guidance to you at this time. The announcements would normally tell you about all the things that are going to be happening this week, but preemptively, I'll just leave that with you and just tell you to look at our website, look at your email, look at the Facebook page. You may see something coming out tomorrow. Uh, and most of our groups have already decided to not meet, at least for next week or at least indefinitely. Easter is coming, and that's good news. We still have to go through Holy Week a little bit and the season of Lent. but. It's all looking like maybe that by that time, maybe we'll have more information, we'll understand things a little better, and we'll know what we need to do going forward. But we need to keep open minds, be kind, be compassionate, and not overreactive. If you are hoarding toilet paper, you may confess that silently and secretly. But if you do know of a brother or sister in a good biblical way who may need a role or two, Please share from your abundance freely. And the really good news things that might come out of this is I know there's a techie guy who's sitting up in the balcony right now videotaping us, uh, Peter DeVries. He's very excited by some of the things that we could experiment and play with and try. That sounds fun. Let's try what we could do online. Let's put out some videos. Let's put out some things on our Facebook page or links through uh, the YouTube and all those good things. Let's try that and have some fun with that and see what that looks like. Let's also stay connected. I was saying to some folks this morning, we may be more like a church through this season than we've been in our 190 some odd year history. Because hopefully, and I'm encouraging you to, reach out to people. Reach out to the people who aren't here this morning. I, I wasn't joking when I said, take the church directory and just walk through it. Occasionally, over the next couple of weeks, you've got some time, and you're not going to be watching the news. <laughs> so just give a call. Hey, hello, I'm John Borthwick. Don't use my name, but your own name. <laughs> I go to St. Andrews. I don't think we've ever met. How are you doing? As simple as that. You might discover a new friend through a phone conversation. And for some of our most vulnerable, 
some of our people who are now on lockdown in their own buildings, they will appreciate that. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not just joking. What a reprieve from duck cleaners and revenue agencies coming to get us. I mean, just a reprieve from that. So if some, some of you, I hope you'll do that. And some have also offered to, you know, if somebody needs groceries, if somebody needs something picked up or whatever, maybe through those phone calls or if you come, become aware of that and you're not able to do something, call somebody else, make some connections and pray for each other and say that you're thinking about people. I mean, I think this will be a great expression of who we are as church through this season. And be ready, there could be some really interesting experiments that we'll try. And who knows, I can't leave these things, it's just who I am. Who knows, maybe we'll decide that we don't need a big building like this anymore. We can all stay at home, I could be in my robe. I mean, professional robes, not just a, not just a, you know, that'd be awkward and weird, but, and just present whatever we do on a Sunday from our, the comfort of my own home and your own homes. Or at least we'll be prepared for the next time this happens. Um, it'll be a, an excellent opportunity for some experimentation, some fun, and some enjoyment in the midst of all the stuff that's going on. So with all that being said, after worship today, greet one another with words, bows, hellos from afar, whatever is comfortable. Um, but please don't touch each other. And then depart. Um, knowing that God is going with you into this day in all the ways that God does. So let's come together in prayer.